You well, first of all, you're not going to have a hundred. We're live. First of all, you're not going to have a hundred. Second of all, I don't give extra credit. We win. Have you ever given extra credit? Sir? I have once. Oh. Never again. Last year was the first. Last year was the first time I, I gave extra credit. So we're going to talk about these functions. This is uh, the heading for this section. You can see at the top. So. On your page that starts with the date. Uh, analyzing graphs, right? Analyzing graphs of functions. All right. So, why did we have to fight through set builder notation, which was this? I'll do the set builder notation for this guy. Isn't it weird that I can just look at that interval notation? And know yeah, that's kind what of it is. Story. Yeah. When you get old and weird as a math teacher, you can just go back and forth. Some would say you're a nerd, sir. Oh, I'm a total nerd. That's okay. I'm all right with that. Thank you all. Right? So, <laughs> thank you. This is set builder. This is set builder notation. This is interval. They both use the same thing? Notation. They actually do. <laughs> right? And here's why we have to learn this. If you, if you look at the page that I handed out, the thing that's hanging up here on the wall, you'll see that we're going to take a look. I mean, we do understand what the word analyzing means, right? Taking a look at, talking about, listing what we see. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at these little guys here, these parabolas in front of us. And we're going to take whatever information we can off of that page and list it. So... When we're analyzing these functions, we're going to list the y-intercept. We're going to list the zeros or the roots of the function. And then we're going to list the domain and the range of the function, as well as the end behaviors. Okay, and all of that is on that sheet, but I'd like you to set it down on the page so that you know what we're going to look at. I don't want to project it just yet. Is it okay if I use an easier function? Do you mind if I use an easy function to start? You're good with that, right? So if I set up The coordinate grid so. I have a straight line zero to the square root of zero equals how is zero?
All right, and all I'm going to do is show you the following functions. And we'll graph these on our calculators. This vertex is a coordinate pair. It's 0, 2. Um, the function itself is equal to um, x squared minus 2. Okay? So that function right there. The function is x squared minus 2. So, first things first. We know what's the y-intercept. What's the y-intercept? What is the y-intercept? At what y-value does it cross whoops, the y-axis? Negative 2. So if we wanted to list the y-intercept, and you can abbreviate it like that, we'd say it's negative 2. Okay, and now we can estimate what our roots are or our zeros. I call them roots. Our roots are negative, about negative, uh, we're in a physics school, about negative one and a half and one and a half. Just about. Wait, there's a sign for just about. Uh -huh. Is that a print? Approximately. That's exactly what it is. Negative what? Now you know. Is that, real, is that a real thing? Yeah. What? All right, now we're just making stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're making stuff up. Two. Um, Approximately. Okay. So, wait, wait, sir. Question, question, question. I know I'm late. Wait, why? Why did you get no point five? I started with one. I just, I just estimated it was between one and two. It is between one and two. When you graph it on your calculator, you'll see it's, it's just about one and a half. You'll see it. Um, you guys did it, but the English guys did not. Um, tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's your bottom dollar, and behaviors will be yours. Christmas. It's a date. Christmas? Christmas is a thing. It's too hot. Yeah. No, we have something else. Good. Are we caught up? It's not. We don't have like, Christmas. That's like an American. Can yeah, I see a hand if you're not with me? Yeah, for least not be done. You with me? You with no, me? Sir. No. Catch you up? What is it? Catch you up? So, what is the domain of a function? The domain is all the Left and right. possible x values that we can put in here and get out a real value. It's not left and right. It is left and right. Oh, okay. All the possible values of x that I can put into this function and get out a real value. Cool? Yeah. So the domain of this function is what? Can I put in a 7 and get out a number? Is 1.5 or negative 1.5? I'm talking about domain, all the possible right. values of x exactly. that I can put in here and get out something real. 
Can I put a seven in here and get out something real? Yeah. Can I put in negative one billion and get out something real? Yeah. Yes. Can I put in positive 10 Google plots and get out something real? And the answer, yeah, they are. Um, and the answer to that is yes. So some super high value number, I can't remember the number of zeros on it. Um, I'd have to look it up again. So our domain is infinite in both directions. Our domain, if we listed it in step filter notation, domain, I usually list it like this. D. Yeah, big D. Domain. <laughs> big D. I did the Cowboys do last yesterday. They won, right? Dak went crazy. He's all right. He got paid, so he played well. <laughs> Money, the greatest motivator of all. For Dak, is like second hand MVP last week. Yeah, I'm, still I'm not sold on that. How old is he? Not sold on that. I swear he's like Okay? This means it's yeah. infinite. This he's means yeah. all values of X such that. X is an element of real numbers. Any real number you put in there, you get something out. Well, that's if you wanted to learn what this meant. That's if you wanted to know what that symbol meant. Your quarterbacks don't get hit. Not enough. All right. So if I wanted to use, this is SB, right? If I wanted to use I N or interval notation, I would put it in, and you're going to want to use interval notation because it's easier. Right? We can only bracket it, we can't brace it. Infinity is not an exact value, so we can't brace it. Cool? Yeah. And then we're going to look at the range. The range. This, the bottom of this, sometimes the top, the bottom of this function is where? On the y-axis. Where's the bottom of this function? It's negative 2, right? We said that, right? So if the bottom is negative 2 and it goes up, how high does it go up? It goes up infinitely. You're exactly right. So the range of this R in set builder notation all X's such that X is greater than or equal to negative 2 Right, because it starts at negative two and goes up infinitely. And then it also is an element of all those real numbers. Can you read that? Yes. Sorry. And so the interval notation would start from the bottom and go up. So we'd start at negative two, that is a horrible two, and we would go up infinitely. So we know we're not allowed to brace around infinity. Does this include, does this range include the value negative two? Yeah. It is part of it. That's where our brace comes in. Okay, so, in interval notation,
I don't know. I've been saying that. Do you put a bracket there? Or not? So the difference between brace and bracket, brace includes the value, bracket, value is not included. What is Remember, please pardon the interruption. We're so With close. Leave down on, report to the guidance office. Thank you. And I want to remind you, in the last three minutes that I have with you guys, because I want to let you out five minutes early to get over there. Remember when we were graphing on a number line and we said X is less than or equal to negative six, and we put a closed circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? Closed circle meant, meant the equal sign was there. And then we did x is greater than 9, and we had 9 here. We had an open circle when it didn't include that value. So, brace and bracket are the open and closed circles of interval notation. Oh, okay. So, includes that actual value doesn't include that actual value. Closed circle, open circle, if that's how you want to think of it. And the value of the number? Yes. Okay, but what and I that? can never, never put a bracket around infinity because it's not an actual value. But you have a bracket on infinity. I have, I'm sorry, I can't brace infinity, thank you, because infinity, can't put one of these around infinity because infinity is not an actual number. Okay, so why do you have a brace on negative six and not on nine? Equal sign. Oh. Equal sign. This is what we started the day with, remember? No. Yes. Sure, he's not okay, so if I wanted to show it, look, I I have negative two in my set, right? Uh -huh. There's an equal sign here. Brace it. Equal brace. Cool. Not today. Thank you. Um, if you're in the English class. You may go now. Does my handwriting look neat? You're doing a great job. Does that? I'm not coming over to look at your notebook. I just told Martelli I'm not doing that. So I'm a little acoustic today. Okay. I don't know what that means, but hey, that's okay. Um, it, it just sounds like the certain word. Yeah. If you could do me a favor, for you guys who are leaving, your homework will be the two on the bottom. For you guys that are staying, yeah, on that page that we were just looking at. For you guys that are staying, we're just going to do those two. So these two, right? We're going to do our homework for the last five minutes. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. So I should use what I learned today. Come on, man. Take every day. Give me one second to reject it, and then we'll do the math. Mm -hmm. Come on, dudes. Yo, Thomas. Sorry, I just I need to catch up. Thomas, wake up. Thomas is out. Just give me one second and I will catch up.
Sorry. Um, hopefully, you did well. So, here's our function. Okay. Um, looking at this function, do you see it? Can you yeah. see it? Yeah. You can read it, right? x squared minus 4x minus 12. Where do you think, where do you think the y intercept is? Where does it cross the y-axis? Negative, Negative 12. Well, it says it right here, right? Yeah. And we knew that. That's the b part. Or c in, in terms of our uh, quadratic, right? That constant. Cool. So first things first, what's our y-intercept? Negative 12. Our zeros or our roots. Where does it cross the x-axis? Where does it cross Four. the x-axis? Um, so this is negative two, goes by twos. Six and two. Negative two and six, right? So we'll list negative two and six. Good? Yeah. Okay, so write the, these things underneath, right? Y-intercept and zeros. Domain. Why am I throwing things? Because I want to find the domain and the range that approximate the y-intercept and the roots. And we'll talk about doing it uh, algebraically later, but not right now. So let's talk about the domain. The domain. What x values can I put in and get something out? <laughs> what x values can I put into this function and get something out? Uh, x squared minus 4x minus. What is the domain of this function? It's infinite in both directions. Okay. So the domain, just like we wrote before, is all x's. Oh man, I made a mistake. I uh, to fix it in the video. Such that x, all these x's are an element of real numbers. That's We're talking about all real numbers. Range was supposed to be y. I have I have yeah, all I was about, I was writing it down. Our Thank you. That that. We'll fix that on this side. That's right. right. So the range of this function, we're talking about the y values, right? So all y's such that where where do we bottom out? Where do we bottom? 16. Negative 16 is our y value, right? So it's everything including negative 16. So that y is greater than or equal to negative 16, and again, is an element of real numbers. Sorry about making that mistake early. My humanity was showing. That's the way the other one should have looked. 
rats made a mistake. You just put a big tight spin it right when you get to the part. Same. Yeah, I'll remind you guys. Because they probably won't watch this video. Of course they do. I wish they would, because then they'll get all the answers. All right, and that's all I want to know right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to the other one. Oh, I forgot to calibrate. Correct. Oh, this one's dead. Need a new battery. This one works. Okay, it worked. Slide that over here. Now we have a negative function. I know, I know it breaks your heart to see a function that looks like this, right? But if you wanted to rewrite it, it would be negative x squared plus 2x plus 8. Same idea, right? Just in different order. I don't know why they put it in this order. It's not mathematically sound the way they wrote it, but I'm okay with that. I guess because they wanted you to see that. All right, so let's talk about... Excuse me. Very excuse. Let's talk about what we see. Okay. So, what is the y intercept? Where does it cross the y axis? Way too easy. Where does it cross the x axis? Goes by twos, by the way. Two and four. Negative two and four. I knew what you meant. Now, let's talk about the domain. What about the domain? Uh, negative infinity and positive infinity. Correct. Can I tell you a secret? You want to learn a secret? Sure. Want to learn how to cheat sure. legally in math? You good? Every parabola that we see in this room is going to awesome. have an infinite domain unless we're looking at a specific range of values cheating. but then we're gonna yeah cheating legal cheating all right so let's talk about the range it's infinitely negative right yeah. and where's the top just yeah. about Looks kind of like, I'll call it nine. Can we call it nine? Sure. Because this goes by twos. Okay. Let's call it nine. Right? So it's going to be less than or equal to nine. Now 